write it, you need to speak it. Someone out there believes it. I don't love me. Lock them down like deep I bam. Crows pick at my right and flesh, distorting my image. We will stand to the rain, the flame. I'm a god. Put it all in the bag. Straight to the point, lyrical greatness. Recognize the violence. Tuck his soul away. Poppy set up a shop and make a band house a drug home. Hey, CCP, how you doing today? When I say CC, you say P. CC. CC. When I say drop the, you say Mike. Drop the. Mike. Drop the. Mike. When I say I love, you say poetry. I love. Poetry. I love. Poetry. Give it up for drop the mic. Let's get it started. What's up, CCP? How y'all feeling today? That's good. That's good. Let's keep that energy up. My name is Dr. Michelle Myers. I am the chair of the Learning Lab and Student Academic Computer Center Department here at CCP. I'm also the faculty advisor of the Spoken Word Poetry Program. Uh, to my right, okay, is Kevin Covington. He is a support coach in the Center for Male Engagement at CCP. Please, please everyone, uh, put your hands together for Kevin Covington. And next to Kevin is Elizabeth Catanese. Yes, please. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> she is a professor in the English department here at CCP. And next to Elizabeth is Alicia Dansler. Please give it up for Alicia. <laughs> she is a graduate of Community College of Philadelphia and is currently finishing her bachelor's degree. She is also a local spoken word poet and a member of the Poetry Collective On Point, Inc. And uh, our judge here at the end of the table is DeForio Barlow. Please give it up for DeForio. He is a testing specialist in the assessment center. So these are our judges for today. Um, all of the contestants, after you finish performing your piece, and there will be two rounds of poetry, um, after each time you perform, you will receive comments uh, from the judges. So you'll stay on stage and we'll receive the comments, and then the next poet will be called up. Uh, there are some rules. So the first uh, important rule is that everyone is being timed. You have three minutes and 15 seconds to perform your poem. If you go over three minutes and 15 seconds, then you will be penalized a half a point for each second you are over, okay? And um, I will also be signaling you the, the, the timer is on the judges table, so you can always look over at the judges table and see what your time is. But also if you're like so into your piece, right, um, that you're not really looking over here at the judges table, I will at the two minute and 30 second point, I will hold up a blue piece of paper. At two minutes and 50 seconds, I'll hold up yellow. And then when you reach three minutes, I'm gonna hold up red. So you know you have 15 minutes to wrap it up, and then, I'm, I'm sorry, 15 seconds. 15 seconds to wrap it up. And then, um, and then uh, if you go over, obviously, the three minutes and 15 seconds, then you'll be penalized a half point for each second, okay? I also wanna remind you, no props. No props on stage, it's just you and your words, because um, that's what we wanna be able to focus on, right, is, is you and your words. So with that, are you all ready to hear some poetry today? Yeah. I can't hear you. Are you all ready to hear some poetry today? Give yourselves a round of applause. So the poet on deck is Van Johnson. But coming to the stage first, we have Annette. Everyone, please welcome Annette to the stage. God bless you, good afternoon. Um, my, my, my poem is entitled, Toilet Paper Learning. Toilet Paper Learning. <laughs> Why do we use toilet paper? It's obvious to wipe our bun. Once we use it, we don't share it with anyone. It, once it served its purpose, upon flushing, it will swirl around. It's a temporary fix and into the sewer system it will be found. Toilet paper is not like a washcloth. It's not like a dishcloth or a towel too. After these, they'll be washed and sterilized. They're expected for reuse. 
At the beginning of the semester, our teachers gave us a syllabus of the things they do expect, yet we wait until the last moment to complete our projects. Mm. But why do we use trust, why do we treat learning and education with such disregard and disrespect? We cram and pull all nighters just to pass a test. Surely these things were never learned. The information used will soon forget. This is the cause of toilet paper learning, will just be degree toting rejects. Thank you so much. So Kevin, do you have any feedback for Annette? Well, yes. <laughs> Annette, uh, very good poem. I, I like the, the, uh, the comedy that you brought with that. Um, I like to tie in. Um, it's always tough being that first one. So uh, you, you, you've got to start it. You've got to creative juices going. So congratulations. I really enjoyed the poem. The poem. Elizabeth. I didn't know how you were going to tie together toilet paper and education, but you did at the end. So it was really surprising. I was sort of waiting, like, how are these things going to connect? And then I got it. It was really interesting, a really interesting poem. Alicia. Um, I felt you had such a great tone, and um, you clearly stated what you wanted us to get out of the piece. And then, as um, Elizabeth just said, you connected both of these things very, very well. Thank you. And DeForio. Um, I agree. I think your, your tone was really, really good. I just wanted to connect a little bit more with you, and I didn't really connect as much as I wanted to. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Annette. Everyone, please put your hands together one more time for Annette. Yes, great job. So on deck, we have Sincere Melody, but coming to the stage, we have Van Johnson. Everyone, please put your hands together for Van Johnson. Yes, let him hear it. Let him hear it. Lose your fear. Lose your fear. Kind of let yourself go on what you're writing. And then when you want to perform something, do it 100%. And follow your words with your heart, and then it'll come out perfect. I get nothing but visions every time I pass a street light, thinking of my brothers in dark prisons that pray just to see light. I mean, being lost in daydreams could feel like a blessing, but the reality of life will have you second guessing. Your faith, your goals, this will leave you face to face with desperation, alone in a battlefield fighting against the demons that run this nation. After 200 years of oppression, you would think brothers would be strong, show love, and try to get back. Instead, let the days pass, cut class, get ass, and own the night by some of the government's crack. Now your mind is a trigger and I just want you to pull it. So next time you look in the chamber, you see more words than bullets. And only at your funeral you see who miss you the most, but then what will it matter when no one can feel the heart of a ghost? But ghosts can feel poetry, right? I'm too dark, well, let me brighten up your night. Because poetry ain't shit but a gift of dark art. It's painful stories we cherish. It's like your skeletons are exposed, standing with no clothes. Why should they be embarrassed? It's notebook lines filled up with rhymes, all confessions of poetic crimes. The stress you relieve makes it a little easier to breathe. But there's so much tension you fail to mention every time you say a sentence. I mean, staring into the faces of strangers, telling all of my secrets. I mean, just because you smell manure doesn't always mean you see shit. We'll see this. A young man sits in a dark room holding a silver revolver, thinking about his father's absence or why his brother can't see his daughter, or why his girl might have cancer. Feels no need to pray because whatever the doctors say, God's going to have a different answer. How many bullets will it take to erase poetry from existence? How many kids have to survive through broken homes and maintain their innocence? If you write it, you need to speak it. Someone out there believes it. Aren't you tired of keeping so many secrets? I'm tired of keeping skeletons because my words hide behind them. Maybe if I let this revolver look through my brain, I'll find them. Or maybe I'll just find nightmares from past poets. Edgar Allan Poe is some of the best lines ever quoted. If he was one of the first to empty the chamber, I just got mine reloaded. Now I've let you inside my space. Some people can't breathe once they get this far. And my words will never leave this place like the light that still burns in a dying star. Keep your applause going, please, for Van Johnson. Great job. So let's get the judges' feedback. Elizabeth, do you have any comments for Van? Great energy up there. Great reference to Edgar Allan Poe, I really appreciated that. I thought that your comparisons were spot on that, and really interesting, the comparison of words to bullets. I enjoyed that. I just the one thing would be to sl maybe slow it down a little mm -hmm. bit so we could hear some more of what you were saying. Okay, thank you. Alicia. Yeah, um, 
I think you had a really good uh, rhyme scheme that you were uh, working with. And also, like, you carried this whole metaphor throughout the piece, and you kept coming back to it. And just like Elizabeth said, um, just slowing down, because you had a lot of lines, but some of the things could have used the pause to let it actually sit sit with us. DeForio. Yeah, I agree. Um, I thought you were good. I just wanted to hear more of your secrets. It was good for me. Okay. And Kevin. Yeah, I definitely appreciate your stage presence. Like, you own the stage. You felt very comfortable. You, you connected with everybody. The eye, the eye contact was there from the judges to the audience, back to the judges, over to Michelle. It was really good. Like I said, slow it down just a little bit, but you don't have to dumb it down either. It was mm -hmm. great. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, please. One more time for Van Johnson. So the poet on deck is King Riv, but coming to the stage is Sincere Melody. Please, everyone, give a round of applause for Sincere Melody. I love poetry, and I also love to sing. I don't love me. I don't love me. But I want you to. I don't love me. But I want you, you, and maybe even you, too. You think I'm the best thing since wheat bread. That's right, I said wheat bread, wheat bread. That's right, because wheat bread is the best. I don't love me, I don't love me, but I want you, too. Hey, girl, I said, hey, girl. Look what my man brought me. Look what my man brought me. That's two carat diamonds. Two carat diamonds. Two carat diamonds. She said, yeah, but who blacked your eye? I don't love me. I don't love me, but I want you. To, she said, who blacked your eye? That don't matter. He said he loves me. He said he loves me. I said, that's two carat diamonds, two carat diamonds. He said he loves me, and he's never going to let me go. Yeah, she replied, and right there is how you know. I don't love me. Yeah, I don't love me. But I want you to, yeah, you know what? My man loves me. You know what? My man loves me. And he said he loves me. He said he loves me. He used to call me beautiful. He used to call me beautiful. Now he gives me nothing but self-doubt calls me names, calls me names. I don't love me, plays nothing but games with my mind. I don't love me, does nothing but plays games with my mind. I have to get back to knowing who I am, stop carrying all this baggage around. And as I continue to replete this mantra and look in the mirror, I don't love me, I don't love me, but I want you to. I start to understand, I start to understand. I must know who I am. I must know myself, love thyself. You must love thyself before anyone else can. Keep your applause going, please, for a sincere melody. Let's see what the judges have to say. If you could step over this way. Sincere melody. Alicia, do you have any feedback? Yeah, um, you have such a great harmony in your voice, and you carry that like when you even aren't singing. Um, and I enjoyed that uh, your performance and your stage presence is also like really good. You look comfortable on stage. I just wish I got more out of, like more of a story. Like why don't you love yourself? You know what I mean? That's all I was like left wanting. DeForio. Um, I really liked your emotion 
and I, I believed it. I think the uh, audience believed it as well. Um, and for the record, I like wheat bread too. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, you actually took us on a difficult journey and uh, like at least you were saying, I, I still, as difficult as the journey was, I still wanted to hear just a little more, you know, whether we're talking background a little deeper, but um, I really appreciated your, your stage presence. You were comfortable there. You, you took us along for that ride. Yes, sir. Thank you. And Elizabeth. I loved when you went into song um, and the repetition worked so well for me. I don't love you. I, what is it again? I, I don't love me. I don't love me, but I want you to. Um, it's very profound. I loved when you had the hand as the mirror. And I think that there was a simplicity that was really wonderful. And you maybe didn't necessarily, I don't know if I agree with everyone that you needed to have more of the story in there. I think that the simplicity was, was really beautiful and it touched my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone, please, one more time for Sincere Melody. Great job. So how are you all feeling? Do you like what you hear so far? Everybody say yeah. So I just want to remind you too that if you hear something during the course of the poem that you really like, you can snap, right? You can say, you can talk back to the poet, you can, you know, hoot and holler, whatever it is that you want to, but just let the audience feel your love, right? That you let them know that, that you're really feeling their words, all right? So don't be shy about that. Like whatever it is that you in the moment feel like you want to do, please, please do that for your poets and show them some support. So on deck, we have La OG. La OG is on deck, but coming to the stage, we have King Riv. King Riv is coming to the stage. Everyone, please put your hands together for King Riv. I don't have a really good history of expressing myself positively, so I, you know, I found a, a better way, and poetry is just like the best way, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on here. That's cool. How y'all doing? Right. I'm a writer, so just bear with me. Uh, this poem's untitled. I've been bleeding from my heart for a long time while asking these questions, but I'm guessing they're the wrong wise. Like, why don't you want me anymore? I thought you loved me. You said you do when I should have been asking you, why don't you love me like you say you do? And that look on your face, it says it all. It says, I thought you knew. I thought you knew that this was nothing more but fucking raw while whispering sweet words of nothing. But that ain't why I'm mad, no. Because I'm walking around with scabs from the occasional stabs of the words you've turned into verbs which hurt more than jabs. No, that ain't why I'm pissed. Because I thought that kiss was more than bliss and wouldn't have thought twice about it being dismissed. If that ain't love, then what do you call it? This on and off again like sex when you just get on and off of him. If I'm drawn because I want more, then come off on him, then come off of him so we can stop with this play and move forward then. Sit, I'm dying. <laughs> Give it up one more time for King Riv, everybody. So we get the judges' comments right now. DeFurio, do you have any feedback for King um, Riv? Really raw emotion, um, which is rare uh, from a guy. I thought that was a reality that many of us don't like to share, that we are hurt and upset in relationships as well as women. Um, I wanted a little bit more. I thought you were going to say more when you said it was over. I'm like, but I think it was a good job. OK, thank you. Kevin. Yeah, I think you, uh, you, you slow walked us to a harsh truth, and, uh, and I, I enjoyed that. It, it didn't just come straight out, but we, start, we started to get your story and how you were feeling. You put us right there in that place, and mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to do that uh, for an audience that no one knows you, and they're connecting with you immediately, and I think that's what you actually uh, accomplished with this piece, so very good. Thank you. Elizabeth. I felt very connected to you, and do you usually write poems on the page? Yeah. Okay. I thought you performed it really well. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't an over-the-top performance, but it was steady. You conveyed the emotion. You got the lines out there. I loved the line, verbs hurt more than jabs. I thought that was brilliant. There's lots of brilliant lines like that. You should keep performing, too. Mm -hmm. And Alicia. 
Um, I feel like you had a lot of good wordplay in there, and it was like real and it was true. Um, as far as even though it was like a really short piece, um, I feel like it, it was it had everything that you needed out of a poem. Just find a way to like land that ending better. So you just like mm -hmm. we know it's the end. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Please give it up one more time for King Rib. Thank you so much. So the poet on deck is Ebony. Ebony is the poet on deck, but coming to the stage, we have La Oji. Everyone, please, welcome to the stage, La Oji. I literally wrote this poem last night, so it was quite a test one. <laughs> I titled this Forget Me Not. There is a country for little men where the young ones soar in each other's arms to a place that is darkness no more leaving behind a world of temptations, of ever-dying generations, where one page ends and another life begins, for all to reach their destinations. And this is my bloodline to you. This is my legacy tr so true. Where the young fly like birds in the trees, but old ones fall like salmon in seas. Where neither commend all summer long, this is my forget-me-not song. It seems like aging is a passing thing, making us into withered cloth that's useless. But in that withered cloth becomes an immortal dress that never looks a fool, a monument of overly made magnificence that comes from an unseen tool. This is my lullaby to you, my legacy so true. This is my last attempt to show you that whatever is begotten is born and forgotten. In a world caught in the music of neglect, a hopeful promise I hope you will never forget. This is my gift to you, a holy sage crafting in fire for all that have fallen. This is my heart and my soul, a consummation of desire, fastened to an emotion I hope you'll one day know. I've gathered this for you, an, etern an eternal artifice so true. In nature, we know all lives are taken. To leave behind a form that's a miracle in the making. Living life is like a dream, never to be awakened. It's such a natural thing, so I leave behind this for you all to sing. This is my promise to you, an ode to a legacy so true, that there is a country for our little men, where time is constantly spinning and never ends where the young do fly in each other's arms and the birds in the trees are singing our song, where the old do fall like salmon and seas, but all who pass by said this life is to be, where neither light nor dark commend all summer long. And this is the world we know where we belong, where whatever is born is never forgotten and whatever is dreamt is always begotten, where we are caught in this sensual music of neglect while the world ever changing, always aging, we will watch them forget. Keep it going, keep it going everyone for La OG. Thank you so much. Kevin, do you have any feedback for La OG? Yeah, actually, um, the, the piece was, was very good. I mean, it took us on, it was, it was very, the imagery of it, I thought was really good. Um, I'd say for the performance, you didn't seem as comfortable in certain spots, and then towards the end, it was almost like a piece like you actually knew. So I would just say, you know, own the work, know it, and, and present it, you know, as if it were yours. Thank you, Elizabeth. I loved all the imagery in it. I, I really saw you believing in what you were saying. That was excellent. I got a little bit confused with um, the address to a particular person, which I loved, and then it, and then it sort of moved out into a, a larger group of people, which was fine, but maybe just a, a little more of a transition there, but um, beautiful. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Alicia. I enjoyed the journey that you took us on throughout the piece, and it, I feel like it was so well written, but I wanted you to own it as well. Like, it's so well written, and it's such a good poem, and I just, like, wanted you to get up there and own it because you did such a great job of like mm -hmm. composing that piece. DeForio. I agree with Alicia. I thought it was very, very well written. Um, although you were reading it, I still felt like you were performing, um, which is a, a really big deal. So I, I thought you did a good job with that. But I, again, a little more strength in it, but I still thought that you still performed it. Thank 
you. You did a great job. You were, you were great. Everyone, please, one more time for La OG. Thank you. So the poet on deck is B.I. B.I. is the poet on deck, but coming to the stage, we have Ebony. So everyone, please give it up for Ebony. He said my energy for him is so strong, he felt it coming through the phone. I said, husband is so strong it drips from me. It surrounds the world and makes oceans and seas. It gives off oxygen to nurture the plants and the trees. See, naturally, he makes me mother nature. He gives me womanly instincts. Since the day I met this man, I've been about world peace. He gives me tranquility, love, and harmony. I have enough love that it can spread around the universe. He makes me appreciate the little things in life, like the beauty and the color of a brown bird, the same color of his eyes, or the calmness I find in the rain, the same comfort of his hugs, or the way the world goes around and around, say way my love circles him. See, he brings out a special part of me, a part of me that's patient, true, dedicated, a part of me that ain't never been touched, y'all. A part of me that ain't never been seen, see. She's a stranger to me, but not to him. She spends with happiness and joy when he's around, giving off a cool breeze to the world on a hot day. The world is one when he's in my life. And when I cry, don't worry, it's just tears of happiness that cleanse me, as well as the world when he really makes me happy. I plant beautiful, colorful flowers around me, giving the world a burst of energy. I shouldn't tell him this, y'all, because... He knows enough. As a matter of fact, he knows way too much. See, he's in touch with me. So just imagine how it feels when he touches me. That's when I light up the sky so bright, giving loud noises of thunder that echoes throughout the world. This is what he does to me. He makes me mother nature. But even more than that, y'all, he just makes me me. The audience took it well. I enjoyed myself and I had fun. Elizabeth, do you have feedback for Ebony? Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I like the way that the y'alls kind of brought the audience into it. The, Im the setup with nature and then the nature imagery throughout it. I really enjoyed it. Good job. Thank you. Alicia? I think it was like a a breath of fresh air. It was like a, a, it wasn't like heavy. It didn't make me sad at the end. It, it, it was calm and you have a very calming soothing voice as well. And um, there was a simplicity behind it that I appreciated as well. Thank you, DeForio. I appreciated you enjoying it. With your eyes closed, I was like, she's really feeling that. <laughs> so that was good for me. Thank you, and Kevin. Yeah, actually, your voice is very melodic. You, you took us through it. I mean, I would rename it Kevin. I mean, that, that's, <laughs> I mean because I don't was- Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> but it was, it was a great piece, and you owned it. And that's, and that's, I guess, what we're saying as well. It's like, not only to get up and perform it, that to own it, this is what I am, and I'm just sharing this with you. And we're fortunate to actually hear it. So very well, Thank very you. good, very good. Thank you so much, everyone. Please, one more time for Ebony. So the poet on deck is China Love. China Love is the poet on deck, but coming to the stage, we have B.I. Everyone, show your love for B.I. This relationship reminds me of a TV with no contrast. And I just want a clear picture. There are war stories and scars from my past loves that I just want to share with you that I just want to repair, so could you? Please help me break this cycle of turmoil because it's the frustration of true love that I'm in dying need of that makes my heart skip beats and my blood boil. They say watch who you talk to about your problems because if they talk about others to you, then they will talk about you to others, mm -hmm. which leaves this question. Who do I talk to when I feel alone and misplaced and God does not answer? Or who can I run to like escape to fill this empty space because I don't do dances? My bedroom turns into a man cave where walls hold me and my emotions and feelings are enslaved. But if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I have nothing. Love is patient and kind, 
It is not jealous, arrogant, or becoming, and it is also not provoked. It's not a game like Candyland or Monopoly. It's me and you caring and sharing and not just you on top of me. I trusted you twice, but they say the third time is a charm. So could you for once last forever without twisting my arm? Mm -hmm. You see, I just don't need for you to complete me. I need for you to accept me completely. So when I'm sitting in my room like Brandy, sipping on Brandy, the Brandy cannot even compare to the erotic narcotic high that I get when you are here or the unmodified, unspecified, and unverified vibes that I get when you are near. I could serve as your liaison or even be a sanctuary or we can go hard from January to January. My sweet love, there will be no limitations, recreations, or imitations, just longevity without dramatic situations or nutty stipulations or jealousy or hate from people with no patience. I took that face off. Is this face fake? No. You soft as a pillow and I'm hard like I'm charred. Stability, strength, concrete, rebars, new car scents, black leathers, black cars, sunroof, back, moonlight. Night stars. If love is so blind, why is it that I see? L O V E U and a much better me. M E A N U K I S S I N G. Talking, holding hands, and L O V E, feeling free. This room is very cold and my friends are few. But with my body and soul, love, I believe in you. Because one of these mornings, which won't be very long, loneliness will come for me. But be I. A lot of people, as far as want to express themselves, so I try to say things to, you know, to let them know that they're not alone in the region. So let's get the judges' comments. Elizabeth, do you have feedback for BI? I loved your confidence, your eye contact. You delivered a lot of that right here. I appreciated that. That was awesome. Um, I liked the way that you put in things like biblical language and then you linked it with Candyland and you had a lot of surprises, but it was still a sort of stable tone. Um, I, it really connected with it. Good job. Okay, thank you. Alicia. Um, I wish you used the mic more so everybody could get that because it felt, it felt conversational and your tone was good, but like the person sitting all the way in the back of the room probably didn't catch that same <laughs> catch that same thing. But um, great use of uh, songs and quotes just to like make that point. And I like your kicks too. <laughs> <laughs> DeForio. Um, I thought you were very deliberate and I think delivery and, and deliberation is very, very good. Again, I wanted to hear you on the mic because I think you had a lot to say. And I think that some people may have missed that. All right, but I think it was a very good piece, a strong piece, but everybody should have been able to hear that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kevin. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, Alicia, well, Elizabeth, and, and DeForio. The mic piece, like you're very comfortable on the stage, but everyone was in it except for the mic. So you got to bring that in. And I mean, to tie in Monopoly and on top of me, yo, I mean, <laughs> I love the wordplay, man. Really, really, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Please put your hands together one more time for B.I. Yes, yeah. y'all like the poetry here so far? Everybody say yeah. That's good to hear. So the poet on deck is Tonio. Tonio is the poet on deck, but coming to the stage, we have China Love. Everyone, please put your hands together for China Love. It's like Love. my sanctuary, like I said in the poem. It's like my salvation. It's my, like, everything. This is for my first love, a love letter to poetry. You were my only friend when I needed one the most. You put up with all my bullshit and ramblings and outrageous ideas. You kept me together when I was falling apart, when I needed someone to talk to. When I needed to cry or just be heard, it was you I could turn to for everything. You got me through some tough times. You always kept me going, you kept inspiring me. Even when I gave up on you, when I've pushed you away, you remained the most constant thing in my life. You are the longest relationship I've ever had. When will you ask me to be your wife? You speak for me when I run out of words, express my feelings better than I ever could. You're always there for me when I needed you most. Even now, when I've abandoned you, when I let you down, whenever I give you away to people with nothing in return, you always come back to me. This is my love letter to you. Thank you for being there for me when I felt like nobody would listen, you did. You understood me more than anyone, loved me more than I love myself, you never judged me once. I tell you everything and you keep it just between us. Can you save me from myself? I need you again. I know you'll come back to me, you always do. You're the longest love I've ever had. 
Our bond is infinite and you are everywhere around me and sometimes you are nowhere. I don't know what I would do if I never met you. I don't remember when we met or who introduced us. I first wanted you to get to know me and you did. I guess you always were a part of me, always there for me. I wrote that piece for you. You evolved me into who I am today. I am still a work in progress, still that scared little girl from seventh grade. You let me play around with you and always tried to string you together with paper clips. How many times have you seen my soul? How many scars have I let you see? You have a hold on me that I don't want to get rid of. This is a love letter to poetry, my sanity, my sanctuary, my serenity, my saving grace. You scare me sometimes, but that isn't, that isn't, but isn't that what I love about you? You have a way of getting me to reveal myself. For that, I humbly thank you. Please accept this letter from me, poetry. You will always be my love, now and forever. Keep it going. Keep it going for China Love. Alicia, do you have feedback? Yeah. Um, your, your piece was clear and concise, and um, it was just like an honesty behind like that, that open letter, like that, that letter to what, what keeps you sane. Thank you. DeForio. I kept thinking about love and hip hop the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. It was good to me. Kevin. Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. I just wished in your performance you would, it felt like you were reading more us instead of speaking to us. So at a certain point, you, you kind of sped up, and just as we're trying to hang on to the last line, another one come up and you're trying to, so it's, it's, it's I, would, I guess I'm saying, you know, just going back to the said before, own that work, Deliver it as if you've actually written it before and you already know it, and you're just kind of giving more of yourself to it. We just felt like you were kind of in a room with you reading something, and we kind of interrupted that. So, but it was a great piece. Elizabeth. Yeah, I could really relate to that poem, the idea of what poetry is, something complicated and wonderful. Um, I, I really loved that. I liked some of the lines like, when will you ask me to be your wife? And I, I wonder, for, for some of those lines where it is more complicated, if you could just, just express that complexity, picture a person maybe as you're delivering it to give that complicated feel. But I really, I really liked it. It was a very well-written poem. Thank you so much. Everyone, please put your hands, hands together one more time for China Love. Thank you so much. So the poet on deck is Rain. Rain is the poet on deck, but coming to the stage, we have Tonio. Everyone, please welcome Tonio. part of the conversation. I don't watch TV because the media lies. Our smartphones and flat screens are the new spies. A lot happened in Iraq that we'll never get to know. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, the US let the opium grow. They had to do away with Gaddafi. He would no longer trade Libya's oil for America's dough. So the oil company CEOs decided it was time for him to go. Listen, I need you to find out what is fracking and why both the Democratic and Republican parties have his backing. I know you smart, I'm not calling you a dummy, but here's a hint, follow the money. When I say Dick Cheney, I need you to say Holland Burton. The vice president made millions off war lives and left two nations hurt. No, I'm not gonna talk about 9-11, the mysterious collapse of Tower 7. Let's just pray that the 2,977 lives lost that day will forever rest in heaven. You ask who am I? Oh, I'm sorry. I am just a sinner who's been humbled by life lessons, who truly believes that living in America is a blessing. The Constitution gave me the freedom to speech, Dr. King the freedom to preach, Einstein the freedom to teach, NASA the freedom to reach. God bless our troops, the good old U.S. of A. Truly home of the brave, it is up to us as citizens never to forget the sacrifice they have made. Now I have four words, polar shifts, global warming, I hope those four words sound alarming. In Yemen, the Czech Republic, Iran, Pakistan, people's getting killed by their own army. Who among us sincerely believes that Benjamin Netanyahu really want peace when he said in his own words he want to see every single Palestinian deceased? By the way, Texas and California is running out of water. Next day will be martial law, then a new world order. We're living in the last days of angels and demons, as written in the book of Revelations as I still find myself heavily addicted to all life lustful temptations. And if I'm yet to provide your mind, 
for any type of mental stimulation, well, I guess you wasn't meant to be part of the conversation. Keep it going for Tonio. One more time for Tonio, everyone. So let's get some feedback from the judges. DeFurio, do you have some feedback for Tonio? Uh, Tonio, I wanted you to be more confident. Um, I think you had a lot to say. I thought you were a little nervous and it showed, um, but you gotta speak up and own it, all right? Kevin. Yeah, I definitely agree with the four year but um, I enjoy a poem that makes you think and then gives you homework because you've caught us up in the last 20, 25 years of what's going on. And, and you know, you, I was in my mind trying to Google some of this stuff like, whoa, wait, I, there's some things I need to check out. But the delivery, you know the, you know the piece, you own it, mm -hmm. but you just need to kind of come out just a little more to kind of embrace us because there's a lot that you're giving us in this piece. Elizabeth. I think your poem is really important. I think it's really, really wonderful, useful, crucial for poets to talk about issues, especially environmental issues. And I really appreciated the direct way that you just hit those issues head on. And you, you know, you were understated when, when you were saying it, but I think that your words came through, the power of what you were saying came through very clearly to me. I really liked it. And Alicia. Yeah, I agree with um, what everybody else said. But like when you when you're dropping education like that, because you were dropping a lot of knowledge in it, like make people listen. Like with your presence, make people listen because you were saying so much. Thank you so much, everyone. One more time for Tonio. Thank you. So the poet on deck is Khalil. Khalil is the poet on deck, but coming to the stage, we have Rain. Everyone, please put your hands together for Rain. It frees my mind. It gets me away from, um, you know, stuff that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. So I write. What you know about being the underdog? Your own mom envy you, man, this shit is hard. I led with my heart, it made me soft. I'd rather leave with my peace, I'd be better off. Quitting school and using a powder soft would be the hood decision in this life that's so hard. But I'm smarter, man, I'm smarter. I wanna be motivation as young as like Coach Carter. Use your mind, your nigga, you go farther. That shortcut, not really your shortcut, it destroys you. And leave you blind to the fact that you're the, and leave you blind to the fact that you're the, future, doctor or a lawyer or maybe someone important. Before your old head hand you that pack, think about this verse saying, hand that shit back. You're not a loser, man, you're not a lame. When you're 30 years old with your life, just give thanks. We losing soldiers in this war. Cops don't give a fuck, we knocking each other off. We losing soldiers in this war. It's all over money, what the fuck you think it's for? We losing soldiers in this war. Cops don't give a fuck. We knocking each other off. We losing soldiers in this war. It's all over money. What the fuck you think it's for? One more time for Rain. One more time for Rain, everyone. Let him know how much you appreciated his poetry. Kevin, do you have some feedback? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was a really good piece. I think um, your presentation, you seem very, very nervous. I mean, even, even though there's a couple times, you know, that there was a little pause, you know what this is. You just presented it to us. Just take it easy, present it, own it. We, it's sort of a theme that's been today. Just own it and, and just work it through. Seems that at a certain point you were kind of trying to remember the line instead of just delivering the message mm -hmm. and just kind of just go through and go ahead and do it. Elizabeth. I liked your rhythm. I liked your hand gestures. Um, it was very, very musical. Yeah, I think just to, um, again, that confidence thing, but the poem itself was great. Thank you, Alicia. Um, I like your voice. I like that, uh, like that that deep raspy thing in your voice. It was a raw piece. And then um, I commend you recovering opposed to allowing like those little slip ups to mess you up. You recovered and you, you got right back to what you were doing. 
And DeForio. Uh, realness is important for me, and I believe that was really real for you. So I, I appreciated that part. Thank you so much, everyone. One more time for Rain. How's everybody feeling? You still with me? Yeah. You like what you hear? Everybody say yeah. Yeah. You want to hear some more poetry? Everybody say yeah. Yeah. Good. So on deck, we have Jonathan Jusino, but coming to the stage, we have Khalil. Everyone, please put your hands together for Khalil. The word nigger to me is just a bullet shot from a musket in 1620 that somehow managed to evolve into the cannonballs that protrude out of my lips today. You feel me, my nigga? My nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my motherfucking nigga is a line that I can almost imagine an eager slave on the sand as he picks from the best of the litter. And now those same descendants are more dependent on the N-word as their definitive now. I mean, now more than ever, I find it strange. The way we strain to explain how real of a nigga we are is if their lashes weren't in our smiles or as if those strange fruits weren't nested near our roots, I hang from the thought of interracial discrimination. Seen through their eyes is nothing more than a gem as crows pick at my rotten flesh, distorting my image, making me another typical black face. So in other words, a nigga out here swinging, ayy. From past events that tempt me to beat the crow to another man's situation, you feel me, my nigga? My nigga, my nigga, my nigga, my motherfucking nigga, as I stand before you and these words protrude out of my lips, we somehow evolve into the ones holding the musket that kills another black man just two years from 2016. I guess you can't teach old niggers new tricks. Thank you. Keep the applause going. Keep it going for Khalil. Kevin, do you have feedback for Khalil? Yeah, you know, I mean, you owned it. You, I love the way you made the connections from then to now. And if you were listening to this, you didn't know the connection, you made the connection for him. Um, I, th I think you made it real. You made it now. And it was genuine. And you could feel that. Thank you. Elizabeth? Yeah, I think you nailed it 100%. Thank Great you. job. Alicia? Um, I think you had a really good delivery. Um, I really enjoyed the strange fruit and Jim Crow line. And then um, just like the repetition to show like how real it was. I wanted more. I wanted to hear more. Thank you. Um, DeForia. I'm surprised. <laughs> Absolutely surprised. Uh, yesterday we talked about judging a book by its cover. Mm. I'm surprised. I appreciate that, my nigga. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Please put your hands together one more time for Khalil. Same time, I, will, I was trying to ex let the, the audience know that it's not such a good word to use all the time, especially knowing the background where it's how it's been used. I don't, I don't think it's something that um, should be said to acknowledge or, you know, to represent others. So on deck, we have Obsidian Suede. Obsidian Suede is on deck, but coming to the stage, we have Jonathan, the coolest kid, Juicino. Put your hands together. Before I start this poem, I want y'all to know that this is completely different prior to any poem you heard. It's probably risky, but I'm good to take risk, you know what I'm saying? This is the last breed of soldiers, the only ones left to take on this quest. The Lord of temptation is our test. Sweet dream is iron, these soldiers don't rest. We will stand through the rain, the flame, the strongest of pain, sat from the burning of flesh. Don't be deceived by beauty inside of a dress. Those who do will be killed by left. The wrong, searching for right, the fight is this poem. The fight is this poem, searching for right, the fight is this poem. Why can't I see? Why am my eyes being deceived? I can't believe. No, I can't believe. This is the beast destroying the minds, the ones that we need. The ones that we need need to stop it. The hero is he. It's time for defeat. It's time to put it to sleep. It's time to leave. Please just leave. 
only go is believe. Let's create some peace. Heard from the strongest of agonies, facing the strongest of tragedies. Truth was revealed, we were unmasculine, this is the last of a dying breed. Never was gullible, don't try to lie to me, diminish the evil inside of me. This is the secret you find in me, diminish the evils inside of me. Darkest of shadows, just follow me. Awaken the secrets you find in me. Have the urge to kill what's inside of me. Can't, cause it's suicide to me. Fight with the mind of a prodigy. Have the urge to kill what's inside of me. Can't, cause it's suicide to me. Make some more noise, please, for Jonathan, the coolest kid, Juicino. Let's get some judges feedback for Jonathan Elizabeth. Do you have some feedback? That was excellent rhythm, really unique piece, a really clear message. Um, I thought you did a wonderful job. Alicia. Um, shout out to your name, first of all. Uh, <laughs> cool kids. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, though, uh, I like the way you delivered your piece, and it was unique. I was just left with like a lot of questions, which is a good thing, because it, it leaves you wanting to know more. Yeah. I just wish like some of those questions were answered in a piece as well. The whole poem was like a metaphor. You know, it wasn't it wasn't exactly what it meant. You had to really like probably think about it and probably hear it more to understand it. Thank you, DeForio. Um, I wanted a little more risk. Um, you said it was risky. I didn't think it was as risky as maybe you intended it to be. I was expecting way more. Thank you. Kevin? Yeah, I, I like the uh, the presence. Uh, like the four I was saying, I thought you were going to come with a little something, a little more racy. But once you got to the end, I was like, okay, I, I kind of got it. It took me a while to make the connection, and I was like, okay, it took me a minute, but I got it. Sometimes it takes me two hours to watch 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. judges. Please, everyone, one more time for Jonathan, the coolest kid, Juicino. So closing out round one of today's audition for Drop the Mic, we have Obsidian Suede. Everyone, please welcome to the stage Obsidian Suede. Uh, mic check. I am a god. To all who can't comprehend, I lend you eyes and new lenses. I give you ears, cause sound bends to my whim. I repeat, I am a god. And a master of soliloquies, written verses for the purpose of trembling knees, weak with cowardice, rendered powerless beneath me. I am a god. Please believe I planted these feet on celestial stairways that extended my brain waves in a universal university. I have a degree. In fact, I have 33 completed. I am a God that cannot be defeated. So listen up to this message from a God. Though we stumble, stay humble. Be righteous and aware that you are gods too. And we are few, those who see things as true and false. We know the cost, we know the loss, we felt the pain. I am a God and I reign over me and my blessings reign over me. And I seem saying to me, when I dream, I hear God saying same things to me, like if you wanna be happy, just do it. If you're hungry for knowledge, run to it. And if someone gets you heated, just cool it. They don't deserve your wrath, though they've somehow gotten lost and tripped across your path, redirect them and protect them from the wrath of another. Teach them to respect like a child and a mother, any other problems, and you can deal with them however. You're a god, and one like you, there is no other. So remember my essence in this present as I present here. I am a god, but not a god to be feared. Mm -hmm. Keep your applause going for Obsidian Sway, yes. Last poet of the first round, let her hear your appreciation. Alicia, do you have feedback? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed like the the message that you were uh, sharing with us, and it was it was very powerful. And and your choices of words were very mm -hmm. deliberate to evoke specific feeling, and I appreciated that. Deforio. Yeah, I really liked your message. I liked your delivery. 
Um, I liked your confidence. And I think my favorite phrase was the, the, the uh, celestial stairway. I like that. Kevin. I like the uh, 33 degrees. That uh, I like the imagery. I like the flow. You, you really owned it from beginning to end. Stage presence, your command, the peace, all great. And Elizabeth. Nice last line. I really liked your last line and how it wrapped everything up. Great job. Thank you so much, judges. Everyone, please, one more time for Obsidian Suede. So that wraps up round one of Drop the Mic. Please, everyone, put your hands together one more time. Let the poets hear how much you appreciate it.